On behalf of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, we are pleased to welcome you to our webinar on anemia and inflammatory bowel disease. Thank you for joining us today. Please note this program is supported by an unrestricted educational grant from Leuitpold Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. American Regent and Logo are registered trademarks of Leuitpold Pharmaceuticals Incorporated and used with permission. I now have the pleasure of introducing our presenter for today's webinar, Dr. Jason Howe. Dr. Howe is an assistant professor of gastroenterology at the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. He's the director of their GI and Hepatology Fellowship Program, as well as the director of IBD Research. Dr. Howe, thank you so much for your time today to present this important topic. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be speaking uh, on behalf of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation for this webinar on anemia and inflammatory bowel disease. For the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be leading you through a discussion regarding anemia and IBD. Uh, we'll be discussing things such as what is anemia. Uh, we'll review general statistics regarding anemia, the symptoms of anemia, causes uh, from anemia, uh, tests related to anemia, treatment options, and specific questions for you to ask your doctor. So first off, what is anemia? Uh, anemia is a disorder where there's not enough red blood cells in your body. Red blood cells are critically important because they transport and carry hemoglobin uh, th th throughout your body. And hemoglobin is important because that's how oxygen goes from your lungs to the rest of your body. Uh, here is a picture of what we look at when we order certain blood tests called a complete blood count. And this is used to help count how many red blood cells are in your system, as well as how uh, using a machine to measure how much hemoglobin is in your body. So these are things that your doctor is looking for when they are making assessment for anemia. So how often uh, do we see anemia in patients with inflammatory bowel disease? The answer to that is actually quite common. In patients with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, they're at particular risk of having anemia. Approximately one in three people with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis have anemia, and it's one of the most common symptoms of IBD. So it's important to recognize that anemia is a serious condition, but the good news is it is treatable. So things that you should be aware of that could be related to anemia uh, are shown here in this slide. Uh, this slide shows many, many different symptoms that can relate to anemia, but I'll focus on the few most important or most common ones. You'll see some highlighted in red, which are primarily observed only in severe cases of anemia. And some of these symptoms are related to different types of anemia. What I want to highlight, though, are the most common symptoms. The most common symptoms that patients typically present with is fatigue uh, and dizziness. In more severe cases, we can see low blood pressure, rapid heart rates, and in very severe cases, this can even result in a heart attack. The reason for that is because if the hemoglobin and blood counts are so low, oxygen cannot be transported properly around your whole body, including to the muscle of your heart. So again, that is very uncommon and only seen in severe cases of anemia, but is something that can be seen. Other things and symptoms that patients may observe or report with moderate uh, levels of anemia include shortness of breath and weakness of the muscles. So what causes anemia? Uh, anemia can be caused from several sources, and in particular for IBD, there are a few things that we look out for. First, we look at inflammation in your intestines as a potential cause of anemia. The reason for that is anemia, in most cases in inflammatory bowel disease, is related to low levels of iron. When your intestines are inflamed, uh, they are unable to absorb iron properly. This is an interesting phenomenon where the inflammatory markers in your bloodstream actually prevent uh, iron from being picked up and absorbed through your GI tract. And even if some of the iron is absorbed, it doesn't get incorporated into your body properly so that it can be used to create more red blood cells. 
So that is a form of a, a double whammy in patients with Crohn's and colitis. In addition, uh, blood loss from intestinal bleeding is commonly seen in some forms of inflammatory bowel disease, more so in ulcerative colitis. Uh, but all patients with IBD, if they have ulcers in their intestines, may have some degree of blood loss. This does not always mean gross, uh, uh, frank bleeding that's noted in the stool. Some patients with small amount of intestinal ulcerations may have a slow amount of bleeding, more like a slow trickle of blood that may not even be observed in the stool. But over time, that can add up and result in anemia. Aside from low levels of iron, anemia can be caused from other sources in patients with IBD. It may have to do with poor absorption of other vitamins and minerals. The ones that we think of most commonly are vitamin B12 and folic acid. Inflammation in your intestines, particularly in the last part of the intestines, uh, can impair the absorption of vitamin B12. This is seen most commonly in patients with Crohn's disease that is involving the last part of the small intestine or the ileum. Other types of vitamin and mineral deficiencies that can result in anemia can be seen with folic acid deficiency. This can be seen related to certain medications, in particular sulfasalazine or methotrexate. Both of those medications can impair the body's ability to absorb folic acid, and those medications may therefore result in anemia. So if you are on those medications and have anemia, that is important to discuss with your doctor as medications may be related. So how will your doctor know and be able to figure out if you're anemic? There, the primary way of testing for anemia is using a complete blood count. You may hear your doctor refer to a CBC. So this refers to the, the slide that was shown earlier in the presentation with the, the picture with lots of little circles. Those little circles were red blood cells and the blood sample is used, processed through a machine which can count the number of blood cells and actually measure the amount of hemoglobin in there. The blood tests in the complete blood count also give your doctor other information in terms of the size and the shape of your red blood cells. Sometimes that information can be used for your doctor to, de to determine the cause of anemia. For example, patients who have anemia related to low iron, we call that iron deficiency anemia, their red blood cells are typically much smaller in size. That's in contrast to anemia related to B12 and folate deficiency, where we often will see the red blood cells actually larger than they typically should be, even though they are decreased in number. So blood tests can be used, primarily called the CBC. There are other blood tests that your doctor may prescribe, may order, which are looking at the level of iron uh, in, your, in your body, as well as the level of vitamin B12 and folate. There are several treatments for anemia. Uh, your doctor may recommend or have a discussion with you, but some of these are also used in conjunction. For patients who have low iron, the primary treatment is iron supplementation. Iron supplementation can come in two forms. One is oral iron, or those are iron pills, and the other is intravenous iron, which is providing iron through an IV. There are pros and cons of each route, in patients who have inactive inflammatory bowel disease or their Crohn's and colitis is currently in, under control, your doctor may consider or recommend the use of oral iron. Oral iron is convenient because it is a pill. However, some patients have uh, an intolerance to, to oral iron pills. Symptoms and side effects related to oral iron can be an upset stomach or even constipation. Uh, if you, your doctor has prescribed you oral iron and you're having those types of difficulties, be sure you discuss that with your physician. Intravenous iron is typically recommended in patients who have active inflammation related to their Crohn's and colitis. The reason for that, as we already discussed, has to do with limitation of the body and the GI tract in particular to absorb iron when the body is actively inflamed. The advantage of IV iron is a higher dose can be given at once. And instead of being on therapy for potentially several weeks or months, your iron can be repleted and refilled in just a matter of a several doses. Again, there are pros and cons between each use of iron, and it's important to discuss with your physician which one would be best for you. 
Vitamin B12 and folic acid can also be provided as supplements. In patients who have had extensive surgery of the small intestine, uh, vitamin B12 may be provided through a shot as opposed to a pill. As mentioned before, uh, some medications may result in anemia, and your doctor may recommend some mild changes or specific changes to your medication regimen if they think that the medications are related. Similarly, if your inflammation is not well controlled, the doctor may be discussing changing medications to get your Crohn's or colitis under better control and also to improve your anemia. Lastly, blood transfusions are an option to help treat severe cases of anemia. We typically avoid these if at all possible, but may be recommended in patients who are presenting with severe symptoms of anemia. So there are several questions that you should ask or be prepared to discuss with your doctor, in particular if you've noticed any of these symptoms that we've just been discussing. Uh, simple approach is to simply ask your doctor if they've checked your blood for anemia. In most cases, if your doctor has ordered blood tests, they should have, they typically would have ordered tests including the complete blood count. Uh, however, it is still important to ask your doctor, especially if you are having these symptoms. If your doctor has diagnosed you with anemia, it is important to discuss with your doctor the cause. As we've already discussed, there are several different treatments, but they are highly dependent on the cause of anemia. There are several anemia treatments, as we've just discussed, especially in terms of methods and types of iron supplementation. It's important to discuss with your physician which one would be best for your specific scenario. You may also bring up with your doctor if there are dietary changes or restrictions uh, that may be related to your anemia. Iron and folic acid and B12 are found in many different foods, but patients who have highly restrictive diets uh, and or are strict vegetarians may be at risk for developing anemia from one of these causes. And it's important to discuss with your physician and potentially a referral to a dietitian if your physician believes that dietary intake may be related to your anemia. That concludes our webinar. We'd like to thank you all for listening and participating.